It's the month of August. My team is still working from home, helping our clients over the phone and video, and I'm rebroadcasting past episodes of Debt Free in 30. When the pandemic started back in March, I remember hearing the stories about the long lines of customers lining up to get into Costco. They had to stay six feet apart, so the line stretched for hundreds of meters outside of every store. It's understandable if there's one place you want to go to stock up for a pandemic, it's Costco. Remember back in March and April when the most important items in our lives was toilet paper? Well, Costco is the go-to place to buy massive packages of toilet paper. In fact, in today's episode, which was originally broadcast a year ago, back in July of 2019, long before the pandemic, I spent a lot of time talking about that exact item, toilet paper. Prophetic, eh? But back to Costco. I went there with my wife a couple of weeks ago, and I've got to admit, Costco is a well-oiled machine. We got there at a relatively slow time of day, so there was no lineup to get into the store. But once we were inside, it was very well organized. Everyone was wearing a mask. Instead of how it was in the before time when everyone was buzzing around like ants, it was much more orderly, people in a line going down each aisle. The shelves were fully stocked, so they appear to have their supply chain working well. When it came time to check out, they have everyone line up with their carts and the line stretched right to the back of the store, but it moved quickly. They had a guy up front directing traffic and every cash register was open, so Rather than getting stuck in a slow lane, he pointed you to the next available cashier and the checkout process was quick and painless. This may be one of the upsides of the pandemic. Retail stores may discover old-fashioned service. It was great to see every cash register open, which minimizes the waiting time for customers. I'm more likely to go to a store frequently if I know that I won't be waiting long to check out. Also, it creates jobs for cashiers and the people who put your purchases in the cart, so I encourage stores to be fully staffed. Yes, I know it costs more to have more staff on duty, but it's good for the workers and good for the customers, and ultimately that means more business and more profits for the store. It's a win-win. Of course, there is another side to the Costco story. Everyone can't shop at Costco. You have to be a member, which seems strange. Wouldn't Costco make more money if they did like every other store and opened their doors to everyone? Why limit your customer base? Well, there's a very good reason for that, as I discuss in today's episode. But there's another reason why everyone can't shop at Costco. Money. I'm not just talking about the membership fee. I'm talking about two other factors. First, you pretty much need a car if you want to shop at Costco. It's kind of hard to carry the 500 pack of toilet paper on the bus. And second, it's very rare for someone to go to Costco and only spend 10 bucks. It's not the corner convenience store. Has anyone ever gone to Costco and spent less than 100 bucks? 200 bucks? Yes, there are deals and products you can only buy at Costco, but you have to have a couple of hundred bucks and you have to live in an apartment or a house that has room to store all of that stuff that you just bought in bulk. A five-year supply of toilet paper is great, particularly if we have another pandemic, but only if you have the cash to invest to buy it and the room to store it. That's why when I'm meeting with a client and they've got a lot of debt, I tell them that there are two stages to the process of getting back on track get rid of debt, and save money. Last week, I rebroadcast the fable of the $20 bill, which is my way of illustrating how important that first $20 of savings actually is. It can literally set you up for the rest of your life, so if you missed it last week, I suggest you go back and check out last week's podcast. You can't shop at Costco if you haven't first saved up $20 and a lot more. But for today, another short podcast, less than 22 minutes long. So please click on the link and enjoy this special rebroadcast where I discuss what Costco can teach us about financial decisions. <laughs> 